we're here to talk about part two of when people in your life might be needing a little extra help. So we're at that 50, 50 year old age group right now where we're having all sorts of changes in our lives, um, a lot of transitions. So are our parents and our other loved ones. So this is a good opportunity. Again, we went over the first four yesterday ideas of what to pay attention to. We're really looking for places where people might need a little extra help so we can have that conversation about what's going on and what we're becoming aware of so we can help a little bit more, make life a little easier. So the next one we're gonna go into today is social interaction. It is huge for elders or anyone to feel that connection to other people. So as they get older, they start to not traveling as much. Their mobility is, is tougher. Transportation is tougher if they're not driving anymore or if they don't really feel comfortable driving at night. But this really does bring up real physical symptoms. You know, they say long-term isolation is like having 15 cigarettes a day. That's what it equates to <laughs> from a health standpoint. It also compromises the immune system when you're lonely and when you're depressed and you get depressed and higher chronic disease can, can happen as well. So I want you to notice changes in sleep pattern, energy levels, and loss of interest in things and people and family events and things that they used to love or really hold dear. That might really give you an idea that they need more interaction. They need more connection. And there are ways to do that. There's resources in the, the city has resources, maybe the church, and maybe you can help them figure out some resources. We can talk more about that. One of the things I notice a lot is notice how they're coming, how they're acting and interacting with their doctor's appointments and their PT appointments. Because when they start missing those, they're depressed. They're often very depressed because they're like, more of this. That brings us into part two, which is healthcare. So I don't know about you, but even me right now, when I go to the doctor, I would love somebody else there with me to take notes to make sure that I got it right. It's good to have at this point, someone uh, that's a healthcare surrogate that can not only make sure that your wishes are gonna be followed out long-term if something happens, sometimes things happen very quickly. And you wanna make sure that your person has somebody on deck that knows exactly what they want and how they want that handled, right? I mean, I do. They also want to be able to navigate their doctor's appointments and they might need a little assistance with that too. It might be just as easy as somebody being there to take notes or recording it for them and then going over it with them again. But this is very overwhelming. Again, I'm overwhelmed <laughs> and I just turned 57. So the next one is money management. This one is really interesting because I think that we feel like, you know, oh, we set our money plan and we're done with it. But it's really important to have someone set up a portfolio for them based on their life changing needs. So what their plan is for the next couple stages of their life. They need to reevaluate their financial situation and things that they might be that they might be needing. Another way that you can kind of be uh, aware is watching them with their day to day finances. So sometimes, you know, especially if it's technology that they're not very good at, you know, bills start to miss getting paid. Um, they complain about money all the time. Things are too much. Everything's too much. Or, you know, they're buying weird things, you know, that, that you're like, where, why are you buying this? What, what, what is this coming from? So there's a lot of confusion around this area for them. And sometimes they just let it go. You might see bills piling up um, and their spending habits changing. Check and see too if there's an increase in their spending. We talked about that because that leads into our next area, which is scams and fraud. So sometimes this is something that comes up for elders. In fact, I think it always comes up. I get them all the time and I have a hard time differentiating between them sometimes. So I think the big things is to remind your person what to listen for and look for and to keep having the conversation. Because I know, I know these things and sometimes I'll be in a situation and go, wait a minute, this doesn't seem quite right. You know, you might be reminding them that, you know, if there's someone from a bank or a social security officer reaching out to them, it's a scam. That's not how that works. Or an emergency situation. Anytime anybody needs money right now, even if they say they're a family member, it's probably a scam. So help them be confident and, and supported and feeling not, not like they're stupid. This is a huge thing I hear from people is they feel so stupid because they fell for that or they did this. But the truth is these people are designed to make them feel that way so that they'll give them the money. And again, let them know, hey, this isn't, this isn't me preaching to you. I have to go through the same thing. 
The other thing is physical safety. So older people are a lot more prone to slips and falls, forgetting to lock their doors, things like that. So you really wanna pay attention to lots of clutter, like on the stairs, making sure that the bathrooms, like the little rugs in the bathrooms aren't loose. Um, checking, make sure that they're okay in their shower and tub. So these are just the beginnings of the little things that we wanna maybe help them with that could cause them to fall. And a fall, a fall when you're older is not a good thing, right? So it can lead to a lot of other things. You might help invest in some technology where you can check in on them more or that makes life easier for them so that they don't have to do things. But basic safety is a big thing. Basic safety can keep them happy and healthy for a very long time. So these are just some ideas and some extra things to keep in mind for where they just might need a little more help. Um, and we wanna be able to make them feel comfortable asking for that. I'm here as a resource for you. If we need help, we'll figure out what they need. We'll figure out what you need because this is gonna be a lot for you too as you age and you go through this, but it's also when you're trying to look out for someone else in this. But my biggest thing to say is, the hardest thing that people do is have with this is talking about it. Start the conversation. Just start having the conversation. Even if it doesn't go well, it's more about what you're aware of and asking them questions and how they feel. So we got this 50 plus thing. We can do this and I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you connect your life, trans life transitions with your real estate ventures and just really be a good resource for you. Thank you so much.